Hello and welcome to Thinking Outside the Box with me, Tim Box. And me, Britt Box. We talk about all things to do with your mental health and your emotional well-being and how to navigate your own mind in these strange times. But we're not doctors, so please don't confuse any of our advice as medical advice. And even though we come at these topics with a slightly more light-hearted approach, please do not think we trivialise any of the things we talk about because we certainly don't. But we do come from a slightly different perspective, hence Thinking Outside the Box. Hello, Britt. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. You're very hot. Um, although, I, I can explain why you're really hot uh, as I sit here, because for those of you who would like me to paint a visual picture with my words, um, mm. Tim and I are dressed for two completely different seasons. Look, I've got, yes, I've got a cardigan on. I'm gonna... Tim is wearing right now <laughs> a woolen cardigan, a t-shirt, long black jeans, socks and shoes. Okay. And I am wearing... Fluffy flip flops, short satin shorts, and a vest top, and my hair is up. In my defence, first of all, <laughs> it's fairly cool in this room. We get, there's no windows in this room, so it's nice and cool. This is just we, an we ambient can, temperature. Well, exactly, and, and ambient is fine. Also, long, je- normal size jeans that just with, with legs, you know. No, long jeans for your long legs. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not like I've got an excessive length of jean going. Honestly, on. Honestly, I look shoes. like I'm in my underwear compared to how you're sitting there. And then he's like, I'm hot. I know this is the man, by the way, who up until only about about a month ago was still putting a scarf and gloves into his bag before we went out for the day. Uh, justifiably so, because <laughs> later in the day I would find myself wearing scarf and gloves. You and I feel temperatures very differently. We do actually. I feel the cold. You know. I don't get very cold. Is that your Canadian blood? Babe? It is. Yeah, 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 it is actually. <laughs> but um, but I get it, as soon as I'm hot, or if I'm just a little bit hot. Oh, that's it. I am a nightmare. <laughs> and everyone knows about it. <laughs> it's hot. I'm hot. Are you hot? It's hot. That's a very English thing, though, isn't it? It's like we've been like a couple of days now into the nice warm weather. Heat that, wave. It's a heat yeah, wave. Yeah, it's a heat wave. Oh, it's too hot. How can, how can we tolerate it? Um, and then it'll know. go and it'll be like, oh, that was our summer, was it? Yeah. That was it. Just those few days. <laughs> I feel like there's an episode there, the dissatisfaction of English people with their weather. I mean, but considering the thing that you do when you have nothing to talk about is talk about the weather, surely that's just that's a bad true, sign. That's a, that's a standard question, isn't it? Oh, but we are sitting here with our frozen drinks. Well, this is it. We're, we're, contem- we're contemplating, compensating for it. Mm. I've got a nice strawberries and cream frostino. Uh, I've got a mango one. A mango and passion fruit cooler. Mango, all right. I didn't want to say brand names because, you know, we're meant to be oh. impartial. Oh, well, okay. We're like the BBC. Well, to be fair, we're so <laughs> we're not. We're not like the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, well, normally we, we patronise local coffee shops. We're mm. very big on that. But, you know, a Frostino is a nice, it's just, <laughs> it's just too tasty. You can't turn them down, you know what I mean? Um, anyway. This, this podcast episode is not about frozen drinks. No, it isn't. Although, I do have a question to put for the, to the listeners, right? Why is it... An iced coffee yeah. is lovely. Is it? But it, yes, it is. But if your coffee goes cold, it's, it's not... disgusting. Ah. Is it just the framework? <laughs> I don't know. Is it like... It if, needs if... to be really cold or hot, anywhere in the middle, and it's just gross, I think. Well, speaking of someone who's perfectly happy to drink a stone cold cup of tea if I've left it for too long, you're probably asking the wrong person. Then. Or uh, heat it up in the microwave. Just to annoy our friend Gemma. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she hates it. Yeah, your friend Gemma does She not. said it was something like, if you've got to put it in the microwave, you didn't want it in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you've brought the wrong attitude to your tea drinking experience, haven't you? But that's a, honestly... Although she's, was, she's not listening to this, I can say what I want. <laughs> you always say that whenever you mention anyone we know. Because I just don't imagine anyone's listening to this. I think we're just shouting into the void. <laughs> our podcast is just this systematic listing of names of people who we don't think listen to it. <laughs> but it, was, it did entertain me when you went through that phase of just sending Gemma pictures of your cup of tea in the microwave <laughs> or just gone cold by the side of where you're working. This is why one of my favourite things to do with my friends is to annoy them. So there's, <laughs> that's it, really. It's the only reason to have friends, I think. You're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what are we talking anyway, about what today? Are we talking about? Yeah. So, okay, this, this podcast episode... Uh, actually, now you say it, I feel a bit warm in this cardigan. Now you've, now you've drawn attention because to it. Because it's hot in here. It is hot in here. Anyway, I'm moving... going to take a picture of what we're both wearing and I'm going to post it when we publish this podcast just it's to, just to like, prove. It's like we've done it in different continents or something. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, we've superimposed ourselves. Yeah. Into this. We, don't actually, we don't actually live together. We're on opposite no. sides of the planet. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a very special episode. Very specific episode. <laughs> yes, because we wanted to cover something that's been... Um, 
that's been in the media recently, mm-hmm. in the, or, or certainly on Netflix, and certainly all over our internet, Instagram, YouTube, mm-hmm. all that sort of thing. We're going to talk about a program on Netflix called Inside mm-hmm. by a comedian called Bo Burnham. Indeed. Um, I had, uh, to my shame, I had never heard of Bo Burnham before mm. this, to the point where I even remember thinking, who's this guy and why has he got a Netflix special? And then yeah. I looked him up on Wikipedia and was like, oh. Yeah, he's, he's, he's like a, a, a famous. Yes, he's, he's, a, he's yeah. a well-known. Yeah. Um, and he was one of the early YouTubers, wasn't he? That's right, back in, well, hang 2009. on, 2005, 2006, oh, actually. Yeah, it? no, this is, he's been on, the, on YouTube for about 15 years. We watched one of his early videos and he is a child. He is, he's literally a child. I think yeah, it's something like 14 or 15 was yeah. when he started to upload videos from his bedroom yes. of just him singing silly songs on his piano. Yes, we should, we should point out this is, it's, a, a show a, it's a musical show essentially mm. where he is doing um he's singing these songs that and I, I i didn't know what to expect it was our friend brad wasn't it that um yeah he put us on to him that, that showed us and and i'd seen loads of people use the sounds on tiktok yes um and i had no idea where it came from and if, how many times does that happen these days when mm. you're browsing tiktok and there's one of those sort of trending audios that people use for everything and then you watch something either on netflix or on tv and, and suddenly, the oh, look, it's that. It's yeah. like when we were watching Parks and Recreation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we didn't realise that... Don't the... be suspicious. <laughs> don't, don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. I hope everyone understands that reference. <laughs> Otherwise, it just seems like you had a moment there. Um, but then and then we're like, oh, it's from that. We didn't even realise yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. But yeah, so there was... Um, so you had like a heads up about this before we actually saw the special. Yes. But it is, yeah, it's a comedy special. Well, quote, unquote. Yeah, and this is the thing that people are, are often saying is that it's not a comedy special. It is really funny. Um, and Bo Burnham is, is hilarious. Yeah. You know, uh, kind of, he's one of those comedians. If you like comedy songs, then brilliant. If you like, like, Flight of the Concords or... Mm. Oh, I'm trying to think Tim of, Minchin. Tim Minchin, yeah. yeah really really sort of clever, intelligent, musical comedy. And that's what I will say. He is, you listen to it and you can just feel how smart this man is. Yeah, he's one like, of those people that you listen to and you're like, oh, you're you're just you're way smarter than me. <laughs> yeah, he's way smart. And and the reason why I say quote unquote comedy and funny in places is because I do think I spent a lot of inside uh, watching inside uh, crying. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I sort of. It is very emotional, and yeah. I think from from research we've done on the internet since mm. he does have a reputation for. You know, bringing the funny, but also bringing oh. the... Bring, oh, just, I just dropped my coaster, sorry. Brilliant. Yeah, this, is, this podcast will be interspersed with us engaging with our tasty sweet drinks. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and you, he does sort of bring the emotions as well. Yes. And there are, there are moments in his shows when it's very self, self-referential self in terms of his own mental health. Yes, I suppose this that's is, why we want to talk yeah, about this it. Is why we're not just sitting it. here like, okay, we're going to talk about some musical thing we've seen on Netflix. It is so integral to mental health yeah. that you and I personally have not stopped talking about or thinking about this special since we've seen it. This is it, and this is why we're doing this episode, because we like to put out here the things that we're currently discussing, yes. mental health-wise, because we do have lots of discussions about this stuff. You know, it's what I do for a living, Brit, you're engaging with people regarding their mental health every day. I'm engaging with my own mental health every day. Well, exactly. You know, so it, it's like we do have lots of conversations about it, and yeah. oftentimes we don't know what we're going to cover until we go to sit down and say, right, what have we been talking about lately? What do we want to share on the podcast? And uh, a lot of the time, we choose the subject simply because we're in the car going somewhere and talking about it. Yes. And one of us will say, right, that's let's what we do that. As a yeah, let's talk about it on the podcast. Because so. one thing I will just say straight off the bat before we sort of discuss. It. Well, firstly, if you haven't seen it, mm. um, I would never ever tell you to turn off our podcast because that would be very just ridiculous. But if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend just yes. putting this episode on pause, mm. going and watching it. It's an hour and a half of your life. Um, mm. And then coming back and listening to us talk about it because you wouldn't watch sort of a film review Unless you knew the film. Well, having said that, we sort of do, don't we? No, but you know but, what? But uh, having said that, though, we're not going to be talking about this as in, oh, and you know that bit when? We're going to actually be explaining the things we're talking about. So yes. we will describe to you, if we're referencing some part of this, the special in particular, yeah. we will explain 
what, what happens in it. So you can do, you can it, listen to it if you haven't heard, if you haven't watched the special. Yeah, I still recommend going and watching. Oh, I would always recommend going and watch it because it is amazing. Yeah, and we said after we watched it, it's one of those things that you know is going to stay with you mm. for the next couple of weeks in mm. your mind. You know, you said this about when you when you saw Hamilton because it was so <sighs> Hamilton emotional. Changed me. I swear to God, <laughs> I've I've not been I've not been the same woman since I watched yeah. Hamilton. But that's because of the intensity of the story and the emotions, yes. and, and, and the, we can kind of relate to all the emotions in the show. But this one, I think, stays with me because, I don't know, on a very real level, because you're not looking at a character as such. You're no. looking at an individual describing his state of mind and, and how he feels. And, I don't know, it just made me feel to, to a level, perhaps, that I'm not used to feeling, if you know what I mean. I do, yeah, and I think the way I described it to you was I have never seen or watched anything that so perfectly articulates how depression feels to me. Yeah. So everyone will go through different experiences. Do you remember when the film Joker came out? With yeah. Wack- uh, yeah. Wacky Phoenix. Wacky yeah. Phoenix. Wacky Phoenix. Yeah. Um, um, and everyone watched that and was like, oh my God, that's a perfect representation of mental health struggles and blah, blah, blah. And I'm absolutely sure it was for quite a lot of people. Yeah. But I remember watching that film coming out of it and saying, well, that didn't speak to me at all. No. Nothing against the film, nothing against the people. But I remember mm. thinking, that's not how it feels to me. No. Maybe like my quote unquote depression is is different, blah, blah, blah. I don't mm. know. Yeah. And then we watched this. And I think the reason it hit me so hard is because that is exactly how I felt mm. um, through the pandemic and still feel the effects of today. And it's yeah. how I have felt on and off most of my life. And it's the first time I've seen someone, like I say, perfectly articulate the feeling, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and, you know, to be fair, whilst I've been through anxiety, I haven't been through depression. And I should state as well, this isn't a show purely about depression. It's about so no, much. And yeah. it, isn't, it isn't a depressing show to watch either it's actually actually you know there's there's a whole range of emotions you know it's all, all of them I still can't listen to all eyes on me without crying though there's always there's always a yeah bit where was, just... but this is the thing I felt I felt like for the first time somebody had not just described what depression feels like mm. but actually made me feel elements of it you know yeah, yeah. relate to it properly because it's one of those things where when you're trying to help people through something mm. there's you need to have a certain amount of empathy to be able to join them in the place they're in but you never truly can because you're not experiencing what they're experiencing but he does very well in this special to show us what he's feeling if yeah that makes sense. no absolutely and you know I it's so often we say that oh depression and anxiety like it's a combined word mm-hmm. but like we've said before on this podcast and like we've said you know my struggles have been with depression yeah I've I've I don't get me wrong I've had I've had the odd anxiety attack mm. panic attack if you will um and I have I've certainly felt anxious in certain social situations mm. but my I don't know issue for want of a better word it's never been anxiety it's no. been it's been depression and uh it's it's hard for me to to explain how that feels to someone who has never been mm. through it yeah. because it's not just oh Brit's sad like yeah. that's not what it is. No, I get it. Yeah. Um, it's much more nuanced than that, and and you know, mm. depression comes in many forms, and it comes to many people in many different ways, and yeah. it's not just oh they're sad. Yeah. You know, it's like the thing I hate was like oh I've been really depressed lately. Okay, what do you mean? Oh, I've just been sad about a thing. It's like that's not what it is. Yeah, the term is used quite a throwaway. Yeah, yeah, like I'm a bit OCD. It's like no, no, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, we we categorise things, but we don't necessarily. It doesn't represent exactly. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this, I felt, I felt did. So the, well, this is the thing here. So. Um, I'll, we'll talk about what it is in terms of this thing and why it was created and, and, and what you're going to watch when you watch it. But um, I did some research on him because, and, and again, the reason why I thought it would be really good to cover this on the podcast, I'm actually doing a video about this on my YouTube channel. I thought, you know what, I want to I want to talk about how I want to shine a light on how he talks about anxiety because his actual story. So you're going to react to to him reacting. Kind of react, yeah, yeah. But it, well, here's the thing, right? <laughs> it's like I. I saw a video, uh, an interview with him on, on somebody else's channel and he talks about his story with anxiety because that's, that's what he talks about regarding mental health. Mm. Um, and for him, I think the two are quite yeah, intertwined no, yeah, now, you know, in, yeah. in that sense. Yeah. Um, and he's talking about how, this was done in, in 2018, this interview, how a couple of years earlier he'd started to experience panic attacks on stage 
Um, and he decided at that time to to quit live performing. I like when he said it's not a good place to have them. Yeah, exactly. Not, <laughs> not a good place to have a panic attack. He's in front of, you know, yeah, 3,000 exactly. people. Um, Bless him. But yeah, so it caused him to come away from it completely. And the interview was just really, I don't know, it was really sort of enlightening. And I thought, I think it's worth talking about you know shining a light on how he's talking about anxiety because he's not out there as a mental health spokesperson but inevitably people ask him about it because it's like oh why are you not performing anymore mm. and here is why I'm not performing anymore um also because of course uh, they tell you that uh, youtube videos get more views if you've got a celebrity in them so just you know for that as a caveat there um, <laughs> but you know so, but the, the thing was it just made me realize that i think it's important for people who have a voice yes you know have an audience that when they talk about this stuff they talk about it in the right way because our audience, when we, we are a celebrity, you know, this is why we get celebrities to endorse products. Mm. Because if I say, oh, you should use this product, I've got millions of people who are more inclined to listen to my opinion than they would be just any old Tom, Dick or Harry on the TV telling yeah. us about their product. So when somebody, when, when somebody in the public eye talks about mental health, I think it's really important to make sure that the message is, is correct mm. because otherwise you've got loads of kids, loads of the, the young people <laughs> um, listening to somebody talking about it and maybe getting bad advice. Mm. And Bo Burnham's perspective is actually quite good. Yeah, And yeah. it's quite intelligent. And it, it, and it Well, puts, he's a very intelligent guy. Well, this is it. And he's not, he's not kind of shied away from dealing with his mental health and he's not shied away from talking about it. You know, mm. there's no, at no point has he covered up why he's not doing live shows anymore. He's been very open about it. Yeah. I think it's important, you mm. know, and, and this is probably, you know, one of the reasons we did this podcast was to be able to start a dialogue about this stuff without feeling like there was some stigma attached to it. And the reason we try and make it fairly lighthearted is because that's what helps us talk about it, is the fact that when we talk about it, we're not going to get into a depressive conversation. Mm. We're going to just discuss the ideas. Yeah, you know? well, and jokes, jokes make me feel less awkward. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, it is. It's one of those things that can help us feel comfortable talking about the inherently uncomfortable, yeah? So all, this sort of, all these reasons, this is why we wanted to do this. But anyway, so explain to the listeners then, Britt, what is inside them? What is the, what is the programme? So basically, um, oh. that, was, that was my Tim coaster then. <laughs> I'll stop dropping these coasters. Um, basically, uh, obviously, we've all spent a large, larger amount of time indoors uh, over the past 18 months than we would like. Uh, now, I don't know how the special came about. I don't know if he was going to do a Netflix special and then it was like, well, I'm stuck in my house, so I may as well do this. Yeah. Or whether this was kind of the, the idea. Yeah. But he has, he's written, produced, uh, edited everything himself Did everything on his own yeah um and he's done it in his what we believe is like his writing room is it like a studio room kind yeah of thing. uh it's like a it's like this, the the outhouse in in on their property in in LA. Yeah. so it's got like a little kitchen and it's got like yeah. this. and he's he's just in that with these cameras and these lights mostly in his pants um <laughs> That's been a lot of time in his A lot of time. Uh, and, and, and doing these songs and creating basically just like a, a one-man stand-up show um, yeah. in this room. And it's interspersed with dialogue as well yeah, of him kind of... Yeah, like him that. kind of commentating on it and explaining on it. Um, and just the, the feeling of like almost claustrophobia mm. that you get because mm. it's just him in this room yeah. um, is something that I think we can absolutely all relate to. Uh, especially over the last 18 months. Well, he describes it as this is what he did to keep him sane. Yeah. Whilst, because, I mean, performers have been hit very hard by the pandemic, haven't they? Because there's no audience they could they could go out to now. Yeah. And when you think about it, if not just you make a living from making people laugh or entertaining people, but also that's your validation. Yeah, yeah He's yeah. been doing this since he was 14. His entire life has been about you know, the likes, the comments, the, the mm. feedback, the laughter from the crowd that he's in front of. Mm. And it's it's difficult for people in that profession to now go about, I don't know, get, manage their mental health in the way that they would normally do it. You know, you've mm. mentioned many times that the things that you were doing prior to the pandemic to manage your mental health. Yeah. And when I say manage your mental health, I'm not saying because you're mentally ill, because 
we must manage our mental health in the same way we manage our physical health. Yeah, absolutely. So in the same way... We For would... me, the, the two go hand in hand. Exactly. In the same way, we'd eat the right things and exercise and move. And, and we'd drink recognize... our frozen drinks. Beautiful. Um, but the same way we do all that stuff to maintain our physical health and we recognise when we've been neglectful of that. Yeah. That's what we talk about when we say managing mental health. Yeah. And I think the were... reason I can relate is, is because my, you know... I had felt like the start of 2020, mm. after quite a long depressive episode that lasted the majority of 2019, yeah. I finally felt at the start of 2020 that I was kind of getting my life mm. back somewhere that I wanted it to be. Yeah. And then the funniest thing happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly it. And, and so I think... You know, he says it right near near the start of the special that he's filming this, whatever it is, because he doesn't know what it is when yeah. he starts out, what it's going to be, just to give him a focus, give him something to do, just just put himself. I'm very much like that. Yeah, well, I, I think I think that's a human thing. Mm. You know, we like to pursue goals and create something that is going to be, I don't know, something of value. You know, mm. it's like, it's like when we've got a job. You know, we might be working for somebody. But we're invested in the results that we get in our little area of that job. We, we want to do a job well because it helps us feel good about ourselves. And so, if you're not invested, you might be in the wrong job. Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, and this is why often, you know, just as a side note here, this is often why people drift into a depressive state of mind without realising it because the job they're doing now is no longer fulfilling mm -hmm. them on the level that it needs to. Are you talking about me? Because I'm right here. You can just you can just <laughs> reference it that I didn't like what I was doing anymore. I had no purpose in life. I'd been doing the same thing for a decade mm. and I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And thus, depression knocked at the door and I answered it. <laughs> not at the door <laughs> yeah quietly no it came no loudly <laughs> with it? amazon deliveries brilliant was yeah. how it arrived you never know who's at the door is it depression or is it amazon <laughs> it's probably it's probably amazon let's Jeffrey face it Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> also it's worth noting that any time we could be interrupted with your latest amazon delivery couldn't we but <laughs> then very true. do you know what i've ordered what i told you, you yesterday i at the grand old age of 30 where am i 33 now um i've ordered crocs Crocs, amazing. <laughs> Please don't hate me. Um, the no, but you had, you had a good reason for ordering I Crocs. I have got all the goodies. Do you know what? Back to Gemma. I'm going to tell her she's, she's mentioned in this episode. She might actually bloody listen to it. Um, <laughs> but I told her that I bought some Crocs and she said she wasn't going to be my friend anymore. Um, <laughs> no, I said that I'm, I'm going to wear them. Because yes. what happened was we popped to the beach yesterday. That was very good for my mental health. That was lovely. Getting out for some sun and some sea air. Oh, but wasn't it hot? It was very hot. <laughs> but Whitstable is a pebble beach. Yes. And I tried to like walk into the sea mm. and it hurt my sensitive little feetsies. Oh, your, your soft little feet. My soft little feet. Um, and, and it really hurt. So I thought, mm. oh, I want to get some. Because your sister, because well, we've recently come back from Centre Park. So mm. your sister had some shoes that she could go into the water in yeah. um, and not hurt her feet. And I was like, right, I'm going to buy some Crocs that are specifically going to be for essentially paddling, paddling in a, on a pebble beach pebble beach and swimming because when we went to the swimming pool I had to use the toilet and go in there barefoot and I thought it was disgusting so that kind of thing for every every problem a solution yeah of yes for every, <laughs> the particular tool yes. for the particular so job. they might arrive so if, if I have to go and get the door then, then I'm going to do that Okay, yeah, fair enough. Because <laughs> normally we would stop the podcast, we'd pause it and then re... And you wouldn't even know. No. But I feel like if it happens now, you I'll might just, just... I'll just, just go. go. You can just keep everyone entertained. Yeah, well, I've, I'm sure I can. <laughs> <laughs> he said dubiously. Um, okay, so what I want to do then, mm. I want to talk about some of the specific moments in the special yes. and, and what they're about, yeah? Because yes. as a general overview, you could argue this whole thing, you just catalog the steady decline of the mental health of the of the person creating it yeah? yes because and also it's kind of it's like a um a particular oh, what would you call it a representation of what's going on is the fact that you know his hair's getting longer his beard's getting longer yes his, yeah, it yeah. almost looks like his self-care is just going to pot although it didn't all of us end up with much longer hair than we ideally would like during lockdown absolutely um but yeah so the, the thing is and and the thing you will notice if you watch this special is that many, many, many of the songs, of the jokes, of the stuff within it is about the internet. Yes. And, and I do feel like this is potentially a follow-up to our The Perils of Social Media episode. Mm. Because <clears throat> this guy, you've got to remember, has grown up on YouTube mm. and he's very, very aware of that 
you know that universe that world all the dark side of it you know um yeah our friend you know our friend paul we were chatting to and then he said to me you know why why do people feel they can be essentially dicks online to people they've never met yeah. and it's like well that's exactly it it's like when you're mm. driving in a car yeah. and then you know and you, you you'll happily shout at the person when the light's gone green go then yeah you know? yeah but you would never like shout at that if you're walking in behind true, them yeah, and they were in the supermarket somebody. and they had paused you wouldn't be tapping yeah. on the shoulder and be like go then no you know of course you wouldn't you're just in the safety of your own car and mm. when people give people shit on the internet they're just from the safety of their own mm. keyboard and it's you know i'll be honest if anyone gives you shit online this is nothing against them but it is usually a 12 year old <laughs> sitting in their bedroom just just saying things for the sake of saying things so mm. just remember that it's probably just a child well i mean i used to think that people have road rage but not pavement rage because <laughs> because they're in their little their iron shell that I they're get, protected I get in rage. <laughs> Fair, i've seen that <laughs> but um i don't i don't necessarily think that's it now i think it you know the internet has taught us that people are much more inclined to shout abuse at the faceless, nameless, characterless, you know, icon mm. rather than an individual. And when we're just in a car behind somebody, um, it's not a person. It's another car that's cut us. Do you know what I mean? It's not. We're shouting at the car rather yeah. than the people. Um, and I think we can more easily indulge the more negative sides of those thoughts than we than we would if we felt we were really offending somebody in front of us. Mm. Because if you just if somebody just does you wrong and you shout at them straight away, I think most people would recognise that as unfair. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and unnecessarily <clears throat> aggressive and harmful to that person. Absolutely. Um, I feel that when... <laughs> I feel the difference is, is like, people in their car, it's like, oh, come on, are you blind? Can you see that? Just go. <laughs> and then insert swear words here. Um, but then people in the street, it's like, oh, sorry, after you. No, after you. No, sorry. Yeah, no, after exactly. you. Exactly. But, you know, you're, you're confronted with an individual, a mm. person, a face, you mm. know, and you don't... You wouldn't want to be a dick, basically, mm. but you know, in, in certain situations on the internet, mm -hmm. we feel we can do that because we feel like, like it's that like oftentimes when so you know, referencing Paul again, yes. our, our, you know, he owns a comic, a comic uh, bookshop, mm. comic shop, comic bookshop, comic, comic store, comic store. What are the, we calling it? The comic book the show. Comic. Anyway, anyway, um, and he will get people just flat out messaging him with abuse mm. because they assume they're talking to the faceless corporate, the yeah. shop, yeah, yeah, rather yeah. than a person who is do, running their business, doing their best for everyone. Yeah. You know, and, and it's just a weird, a weird effect. None of us are immune to it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you know, like us talking about it, we haven't made that mistake in the past, mm. but hopefully. You know, as we understand it now, we would think twice before just giving people shit, basically. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But um, anyway, moving on. Anyway, moving internet. On. Yeah. Uh, the internet. Yeah. So, the, like, the the thing that I really, um, I really notice a lot of the jokes mm. are based on internet um, yes. tropes. Yeah. So there's one sequence where he does a reaction video to the to the video that he's just made. So he's sitting <laughs> there, like, in a in a YouTube reaction video style. Um, with it, with it, like playing in a little square above yeah. him. Yeah, and there's another bit where he he see, he has a shot of him in in this room, and he's in the corner of the shot playing a video game. And it's yes. like you know when you see on YouTube the we oh, you can watch me play this play game. The game. It's all like Twitch, it, like yeah. stuff like that. Oh, is that? I don't know. I don't know what the that is. Twitch is a website where you watch people sort of stream games and everything. Uh, apologies, forty eight year old man here. Sorry, <laughs> 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 but you know, and it and. and also, you know, he has a song called "Welcome to the Internet." So yeah, well, I mean, I can. I mean, I would. You might think, oh, you can't relate that, but you know, we have, after all, watched how many hours of that Star Wars game of Brad on the internet playing that Star Not Wars game. Not our mate, game? Brad. Different Brad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jedi Fallen Order. We watched him play the whole. We Camp watched Pestis the whole game. game, and that was at least twenty odd hours. It was good. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, we watched him play. I'd like to point out we watched him play the game because Tim and I are not gamers. We do not have a games console mm. for one very good reason. If we had a games console, we wouldn't be recording this podcast. That's it. Bye bye. We would do nothing <laughs> else. So we have to. We have to not have a games console. Yes. Otherwise, we would just play games. But the story in Jedi Fallen Order is canon. Um, and I needed to know the story because I'm a big Star Wars fan. Well, that's really funny, right? Compared to the average person, I am. A Star Wars obsessive, right? But yeah. compared to actual Star Wars fans, yeah, you, you I can't even spell 
I don't know, Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all I've got. Um, yeah, exactly. I'm more so of a, I'm we're, more we're of a Clone Wars, I'm more of a Clone Wars yeah. fan, I think. We're happy to appear like Star Wars experts to those that know nothing. Yes. But when it if we were at a convention, we keep our head down. Also, if I was at a convention because I'm a woman, I would inevitably have a manga. Oh, you like Star Wars, do you? Name me every single Star Trooper that was on the <laughs> Star Destroyer. Oh, you can't. You're not a real fan. <laughs> I hate them like that. I think you may... <laughs> You might be slightly misrepresenting the... No, gatekeeping. The There's nerd. a lot of gatekeeping in Star Wars community. And I oh, are we on about the patriarchy again? <laughs> I mean, Honestly, down with the patriarchy. It's been, thank God, it's been a good half hour since you mentioned the patriarchy. <laughs> and I was starting to worry that you'd moved on. <laughs> I think we should move on. What, anyway, yeah. what have you got next to um, the little highlighted so, page? There, okay, Tim? so here's the thing. So... The, I want to talk about the reaction video that he does. So yes. he films a video, it's called Unpaid Intern, and it's a really funny song in a mm. jazz style about interns that aren't paid. Anyway, um, and then halfway through the song, it, it cuts to him <laughs> sitting there in a sort of studio setting, watching, the, I'm just going to react to this video. <laughs> and then he has a reaction to his reaction video. And then yeah. he has a reaction video to his reaction it's, video to his reaction. Mad. And it just disappears in itself. And I thought that was just a commentary about how lame reaction videos are, which I took <laughs> quite personally, because as some of you may know, I've got a reaction video or two on my channel. Yes, you do. Um, but, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm over it now. I don't feel so hurt, man. But, um, so I, I was personally victimised by a white woman's Instagram. Oh, we'll come on to that, definitely, <laughs> yeah. But, and then I realised what, what that actually is, is a representation of what's going on in his head mm. when he's creating something to put out to the world. Overanalyzing. Yeah, and it's like, then he's analysing what he's said about it to analyse it. Yeah. And this is the curse of the, you know, the very intelligent person and also the very savvy and socially in, uh, internet aware person. Creatives as yeah. well. This is what we do. Because now when you're a creative, you don't just say, I want to put that out to the world. You're now factoring in the direct feedback you're going to get from your audience or mm. Not your audience, just people who have stumbled across this thing that you've made. Yeah, and te and telling you, I don't like that. Yeah, okay, go mm. away then. Mm. <laughs> well, it's like you know, who who is it? Um, the weekend, yeah, the 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 pop star, the weekend. Oh, okay, not not the the Saturday and Sunday. No, no, the the, the weekend. The weekend, yeah, yes. Um, he doesn't do interviews, does he? Does he not? In the same way, Prince didn't do interviews. I yeah. love that. And. Something tells, That'd be me. There's something about that that's like, yeah, that's that's not a bad idea, is yeah, it? Because yeah. then you can just do what you want to do, knowing you're not going to have to justify it. People yes. can make of it what they want to. Yeah. They can interpret it in any way that they see fit, how mm. it relates to them. And I don't know, it, it feels like that's a smarter option. Yeah, yeah. Because I think these days when we create something, we're always creating it in within our mind. How would we justify it if we were challenged on it? Yes, exactly yeah. that. That's what took me so long to write my proxy book. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're always imagining the criticisms straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. It's like because I, I, I said to um, I said to Helen, who's my my writing mentor. I said, you know, she was like, "What's one of your fears?" I was like, "Oh, my fear is that people will read it and not like it." And she's mm. like, "What makes you think? What? Why have you automatically jumped to people are reading it?" It's like that's funny. Just make the thing. <laughs> just do the thing. And it's yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because I tell you what it is. It's because we the, the the world we live in. If you do or make anything yeah right if you do absolutely anything creative and you share it with just your friends and or loved ones mm. you will be immediately hit with oh, you should sell that you should put that That's on etsy true, you should yeah. do that you should make that as a side hustle mm. it's like we can't do things just for the sake of doing them anymore yeah what happened to hobbies exactly you know nobody and you know i like i sit i've told you this i told you this privately i think well not privately like off of the podcast mm. but um off air, off air yeah <laughs> but i've got you know i i follow people like i know it's gonna make me sound really old i follow like young girls okay mm -hmm. that um that have instagrams and will put on their stories okay guys just tell me what kind of content you want to see from me and it's mm. like why are you just why are you performing just just be you, be you. just yeah why is it all now a you know a side hustle why does it, i don't know it's I just, all about yeah. the likes and the follows and things like that isn't it i know it's, i find it mad I yeah find it mad. i guess that's because we've monetized just existing now. i just do what i do and if people like it awesome if they don't here's the unfollow button but i think you had to learn that the hard oh, way didn't you yeah. you know because when you were creating content for your baking audience mm. you were constantly thinking about what do they want from me what can i do next what seems to be popular i'll make more of those sorts of things and then i stopped caring <laughs> but that's that's where you've got to get to though yeah, and yeah. it's not about you stop caring about what you do no but you've got to stop caring I don't about really whether, do it now anymore that's 
Well, to it. But that's it. You've got to stop caring about what people are going to think of it, whether yes. they're going to approve of what you do. Because yeah. the bottom line here is, you know, there's a there's a lot of people out there. There's seven and a half billion people out there. Do you Too know what I mean? People. And I'm always saying this to people in terms of self-esteem and how we feel about ourselves. Yeah. Your job isn't, you're not here to make people happy with who you are. No. You're here to make you happy with who you are. Your opinion of what you should be doing and what you, you want to do with your life, that's the only one that counts. Mm-hmm. And if you fear that, oh, but what if I end up on my own with nobody liking me? First off, if nobody likes what you do, that has no right to damage your opinion of what you do. Mm-hmm. Secondly... If you're just you, this funny thing happens is that the people that appreciate who you are, they find you. Absolutely. And when you encounter them, they stick with you. And funny enough, they tend to be the people that you approve of and that you like as well Mm because they're your sort of people. Mm -hmm. If we just put our energies into being ourselves, then we take away all of that, what do you want from me? Yeah. Second guessing that we can't possibly get right anyway. Well, exactly. You can't You can't change other people's minds. You can only change your own. Mm. You know, it's really hot at the moment. And I've kind of been talking on my social media about just wear what you want. Like, don't, don't yeah. feel like you've got to cover up because, oh, heaven forbid, someone might see you've got skin. Mm. It's like, I don't, you know, yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a size 16 to 18 with or without the shorts on. Doesn't matter if I've got jeans yeah. on. I'm the same... I'm the same bloody size. What was it? You saw that that yeah, TikTok was, of yeah, them. this girl, and she was like, she was like, if if you think if you think you're fat with the dress, just but babe, they know you're fat. Just wear the dress anyway. And I just really really loved that because mm. that's that's kind of how I feel, you know. And some people in my in my DMs and in my comments were like, oh well, I was I was worried what what the neighbours might think if I go out in a vest top. Mm. It's like the neighbours aren't going to give a shit. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. all you. Like yeah. it's it comes from you and your over-analyzing. To, to bring this back to what we're talking about as well, because when I watched that interview with Bo Burnham um, about his anxiety, oh. he recognized at one point that sometimes a panic attack could be induced by this need for him to get a standing ovation that night. Oh, wow. And, and like, I, I need them to think this is the best show they've ever seen yeah, and things yeah, like yeah. that. And he's sort of talking about it and saying, I mean, am I, am I that fragile? Am I that <laughs> desperate for approval? But really, everything about, you know, who he is has been mm. set up to create that importance on that because he put his videos on YouTube and he got millions of people following him and liking him. How how many people have liked that I'm Boyo video from when he was really young? It's like 33 million, Exactly, yeah. There's there's so many views on that. You know, Mm. he's had, I think in total on his channel, he's had over 400 million views, you know. So there's something about his education, his learning in terms of what is good for him, what, what cultivates, you know, positive feedback it's placed a lot of importance on what other people think. Yeah. So when he goes out on stage where he can directly hear the feedback, are people laughing at that joke? Was that laugh as big as I got last night or mm. not? You know. Then he's constantly, as he's creating, as he's performing, analysing how his performance is being received. Yeah. And that can be a road to a very dark place, you mm. know. Um, but, and, and that was what was interesting about hearing him talk about that, was that he recognised what the triggers were. Yeah, mm. didn't necessarily at that time help him put that right because no. he was discovering what anxiety was as he was in the middle. Well, at the start of a sixty-day tour, mm. you know, and so that I think must it, have been so scary. Well, this scary. is, and you can understand why he decided he didn't want to experience that anymore mm. and he didn't want to put that pressure on himself. Yeah, you know. But again, it's interesting when we were talking about that, you know, that reaction video uh, sequence. Yes, that's what's going on in his mind. He's not just creating something. He's now explaining certain parts of it to himself, imagining conversations with others or people challenging I do that, like we said in the podcast last week. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm constantly having arguments with imaginary people in my mm. mind. Because we've been aware of the disapproval of people. Mm. Funny enough, the people that, that aren't our people. You mm. know, and, and that's what happens, isn't it? Now that the internet, you can access everything you would ever, you know, you could ever imagine. A little bit of everything all of the time. Well, that's what he talks about in the, in the song Welcome to the Internet. A little bit of everything all of the time. Funny enough, um, when I was researching this podcast and, mm. and reminding myself of the each mm. song that's in it, I found a video that that had ranked all of the songs all twenty right. to, to number one. Yeah, uh, and it, they'd done it on it was a musical comedy website. They okay. have over half a million votes because it's a big uh, voted number one song in the in the special. Go on. Welcome to the internet. Really? Which is really interesting. Oh, I isn't would it? not have said that. Yeah. It's a really good song. But they're all really good songs. They are, yeah. Also, I think ranking them in any way, shape, or form, that's not going to do Bo any good. <laughs> Amazing, just, yeah. Just, my mind instantly goes. I remember thinking when I was watching it several times, 
Mm. Is Bo okay? Like, have we checked on him lately? Is he mm. good? Is he all right? Because and I, I found myself genuinely concerned for his his well being. Well, some I, point. I think that was the especially thing. when he was laying on a blanket with his head on a pillow, just talking into a microphone. He's like, mm. I've had an idea. Like, I don't, well, I just... you know, I, I think it's important to remember that certain aspects of what we see. He's set that shot up, you know. Yeah, he's set the camera yeah. up. He's pressed record, you know. Yeah. But I think, I think it would be wrong to dismiss it purely as theatre because I think he is trying to convey mm. how he feels and what he's been going through. Mm. And you know, it took him over a year mm. to write, film, edit, you know, put it yeah. all together. And you can see why people regard it as like a masterpiece. It's art. Yeah. It's art. It really, it's it really is. It's a, it's quite an experience to watch, but. Mm. Um, there's, I mean, I want I want to talk about various aspects of it, you know, and it's before we finish. But I appreciate that we're talking about it in general more than actually analysing individual ones. But one of the other songs that he has on there is because he turned thirty when lockdown in lockdown, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, be too. I don't mean bringing it home. But it just a lot of the things he mentions in that reminded me of you when what you the- when you turned thirty. <laughs> I had a crisis. Yeah, well, this is I had a thing. crisis. You had a thirty. Yeah, because in my mind, when I was still twenty, I was like, oh, I'm a young twenty-something. <laughs> even at twenty-nine, even at twenty-nine and a half, I'm like, I'm still a twenty-something. Yeah. And then I hit thirty because what it was, I can remember being younger and thinking that thirty mm. was a grown-up. Mm. Like thirty was, you've got your shit together. You know what you're doing. You know. You own your yeah. house. I don't know. It was just all this stuff that I was yeah. like, 30 felt big to me. Yeah, yeah. And then I hit 30 <laughs> and I realised, oh, this is just the same as my 20s, but I have a bit more money, more confidence, and I give less of a shit about anything. Yeah. You I... kind of... I Because I, it's really funny. I can almost pinpoint exactly where my attitude to things changed. And it was, around, it was the summer I turned 30. Yeah. And I kind of went, huh. I did that kind of, you know how like, you know how like old ladies just don't give a shit. <laughs> they'll just do what they want and say what they want. And it's just like, yeah. and nobody cares because they're just old and they'll do what they want. You know, like you yeah, have to say yeah, yeah. something like just shouting at people. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I kind of feel felt a little bit of that. I turned mm. 30 and I was like, oh, oh, none of this matters. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then I just, yeah. I didn't have any of the anxieties I had in my 20s. But I tell you what I think a lot of it was about as mm. well, because he references this in the song, mm. he's used to being the young one in the yeah. crowd yeah. because where he had, you know, so like he was like the youngest person ever to get, um, uh, to be a guest on one of the late night American shows yeah, when he was yeah. 18 or something like that and have a little comedy slot on there. Mm. And and so he's used to being the youngest person in the conversation. And he mentions about people, he, he's used to be around people that are shocked when he said, he, I was born, born in 1990. 1990 yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and that's the same as you. Yeah. Because you did everything at a young age and you were like, you know, on the West End when you were a teenager. I was the young, like one of the youngest ones in the cast, in exactly. the West End cast. And I was, um, when I started my business, mm. I was the, the youngest person uh, at the networking group that mm-hmm. I was in. Um, yeah. yeah, I was always, I always, you know, when I was always the younger one of things that I did. But yeah. is it you were doing things that older people were doing, mm. but you were kind of reveling in your reputation as the young, sort mm. of energetic, sassy one, you know, and now you're 30, you know, and suddenly and now you're... Now I'm in... old and miserable and I'm like a bitter <laughs> lemon. Yeah. But and this... I'll just, I'll just wear what I want and I've ordered Crocs. Yeah. I'm there. And and this and this is the thing, there's there's a lot of this stuff when on rewatching. Him coming to terms with doing what he does, but as like you know, an adult, in, an adult, yeah, yeah, in, in yeah, yeah. Quote, there, you know. yeah. That's it, yeah, because because uh, I think it suddenly changes how he sees himself, and a lot of the existential crisis he's having during <laughs> lockdown is kind of where he's forced to confront certain things about himself. Yeah, and, and this is why I've got in my notes here. It helped him it, with a question, question mark. mark at the end of it because <laughs> I know that's how it's framed. Like doing this helped him, you know, stay alive, stay sane. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I think it forced him to confront a lot of things emotionally. Yes, and and I think that's what we've experienced in lockdown is this pressure cooker <laughs> of emotive content where we're forced to mm. look at our life in a certain way mm. and maybe you know come to some unpleasant you know conclusions. Well, a lot of people have made decisions. I mean, I don't think it's any. Um, like coincidence mm. that I have a book that's out that went to number one to Amazon charts that I wrote a few years ago. It's very good. Um, but it's about starting a, starting a business, about starting a case. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's any coincidence that 
sales for that book mm. literally rocketed yeah. in the pandemic. Yes. Because people were kind of at that point of, I don't want to do what I'm doing anymore. I want to do something yeah. else. Yeah. You know, so so that went up. You know, divorces went mm-hmm. up massively. Yeah. Um, breakups went up because people realised, oh, actually, I'm not happy in this current situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, did, it did force people to, to, like you say, confront a lot of things that they had maybe been ignoring. Well, that's the thing. Like my, my like, ten- like the courtyard. Yeah, my, <laughs> uh, yeah, decorating the house. Decorating like the house. Yeah. Um, my um, my TED talk mm. at the start of the lockdown was on something like three thousand views. Mm. You know, it's now about to hit a million views. Oh, look, we've all done a TED talk, Tim. <laughs> I, and I wasn't saying. I mean, obviously, partially saying that just to blow my own trumpet there. But you know, what I mean, it, it, <laughs> we I, I saw the the views take off. Because people were suddenly feeling anxious about certain aspects of their life. And people were at home. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you've got to deal with it, haven't you? When you can't engage yeah. in your distractions, in, yes. your, in your busying strategies, yeah. yeah, you've got to deal with the things that you've put on the back burner or just tried to avoid. You know? Do you know, I'll be forever annoyed at myself that I didn't finish my TED Talk with, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Like people do on the internet, I just kind of, I just kind of shuffled off awkwardly. Yeah. I was just exceptionally glad it was over. I did that shuffling off awkwardly. <laughs> If you look at the video, <laughs> look at the way I walk off stage. I don't walk like that, you know. It's like, I don't know if it was the, the adrenaline dump, but finally it's, it's Honestly, over. Honestly, I'm just I was just so pleased it was over. And then someone messaged me when I said about not saying thanks for coming to my TED talk, and she was like, "Oh, you'd always do another one." I was like, "Never again in my <laughs> life ever will I ever do another TED talk." Mm. I know people have done multiple ones. I don't. I don't want frequent nervous breakdowns. Thank you. <laughs> I'd rather just carry on and live my life. Well, certainly there's a certain amount of pressure that comes oh, with it, isn't pressure. there? Well, yeah. we, well, we're talking about doing another episode on just our TED Talks, aren't we? Yeah, we were thinking about that because the actual going through the process, yeah, was a, was a strain on our mental health, you know? Oh, yeah. I had a breakdown, what was it, two days before about my dress? Was this your dress? Do you remember that? Oh, do I remember it? <laughs> I mean, I was traumatised by it, love, you know? I'm still trying to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you love me. Whether you like it or not, I was I was quite proud of myself. The patience I showed on that day. Um, <laughs> anyway, carry on with your. I mean, notes. trying to get this get the solution of what you're going to wear for your TED talk that day. It was like trying to play tennis against Roger Federer. The ball kept coming back. Do you know what I mean? I'd, look, I'd offer stuff look, over there. That video will outlive me. All right, that video will keep going long after I'm gone. I needed to make sure I was wearing the right thing. So here's oh that that has completely um, unblocked a memory there. Hmm. When Bo Burnham was talking about his anxiety, so he would have a panic attack, and yes. then he'd be on the train to the next show for the next day, googling panic and and um, God, yeah. basically it was googling stage fright because yeah. that's that's what we used to call performance anxiety now, and some people still do. But anyway, and the stage advice, fright. well, the advice was, yeah. oh, you know, when you go up to talk in front of people, they don't they're not as concerned about what you're going to say or how you're going to say it as much as you think. You know, that, that, you know yeah, we say that yeah, a lot, yeah. don't we? Yeah. People don't think about you as much as you think about you, so don't place undue importance on yes. it. But, and he instantly, of course, rejected that mm. as, as, an, as a, a reason because he's like, no, they've paid money, they, yeah. they look up to me, mm. I've got to do a good show. Yeah. If it goes badly, that is a very bad thing, yes. you know? And so it was almost like the standard arguments that help calm people's anxiety when it comes Make to it worse. were just making it worse. And yeah. in the same way that you're describing, <laughs> there's a video going to be on the internet of me Forever. saying, yeah, and I've got to get every word correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, there is a certain, there are going to be those instances where feeling anxious mm. is absolutely appropriate. You know, I will say though, mm. smashed it. <laughs> you did smash it. I'm so proud of mine. I was proud of you as well. That's why I stood up and clapped my hands together over and you over again. You just wanted to be in my video. Okay. <laughs> At the very end, I jumped in front of the, the camera. At the very end, you Woo! see Tim standing up, giving me, giving me a little standing uh, And what can you see at the end of mine? Brit standing up. <laughs> Which one's been in each other's videos? <laughs> That's it, yeah. Okay. No, look at me, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the focus is on Tim, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so I thought, I thought that was interesting. But that brings me on to, to something that I do want to say is that a lot of people will look at his situation. You know, Mm. celebrities lead very different lives to us, you know what I mean? Yes. And it'd be easy to say, well, their mental health struggles are completely detached from my mental health struggles, Mm. yeah? Um, But he references this in the interview that I saw. It's like, it's a really easy trap to fall into, to say, well, my mental health struggle, struggle, being anxiety or depression, it is a marker of 
what's special about me. So it comes with the territory. You know, I do these things and I, I put myself out there and I create art that other people aren't necessarily able to create. And the mental health struggle is, is the, you know, that's because I'm, and he, he describes it as um, the most special boy there ever was, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> and he said that, you know, he's long ago abandoned that idea. Um, because this is this is one of those things that we depression it's referred to as depressive reality mm. where you say I'm depressed because I understand the world better than those who aren't depressed it's a mark of intelligence if you like yeah mm. so it, it forces us to cling on to our in air quotes disorder yeah yeah because it's because we're so good yeah you know, and you, know know I mean? you people make it part of their, their personality which is why I'm always very careful with my language um not to sort of say, you know, my depression, if mm. you will. I will say yeah. the depression that I experience or yeah. the depression that that I go through. I don't know. Mm. I'm, 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 I Sometimes I do, don't get me wrong, you'll sometimes oh, yeah, say yeah. it because it will just slip out because it's yeah. easy. But it's not, like, I don't wear it as a, a badge. Do no, you know what I mean? Exactly. I'm not like, hello, my name is depressed. Well, well, this is the thing, and it was good to hear him say in that interview that's wrong mm. yeah that's that's kind of that's a misconception anyone there thinking well this is the way i feel comes with the territory of what's also good about me if i if i if i lost that it would be because i'd lost something good about me yeah, as well yeah. and and we can't we can't be doing that because anxiety and depression mm. whilst what triggers them for an individual might be very unique to them yeah we are this is a shared experience yes yeah we all have the challenges that potentially could cause us to feel anxious and when he's sort of rejecting the potential answer to his problem as in people aren't as concerned as you think they are mm. um that's not because he has this unique position and he will have anxiety in a unique way it's because we haven't quite found the answer to what his mind is creating as the barrier mm, do you absolutely. know what i mean by yeah, that? yeah yeah i do yeah so it's like it that didn't do the trick for him but there will be something that does, yes. you know, yeah. um, and whether that be, you know, taking a more logical mm -hmm. understanding of his situation, mm. you know, so, you know, I would, you or I talking to somebody like that would probably say, well, look, don't worry, because even if you do a bad performance, your crowd are going to love it because they won't recognize it as a bad performance. No. And they, they would go there to see you forget what you were meant to say, yeah, but yeah. then have to ad lib something instead, you yeah. know, because they'd find that entertaining. A lot of the time, that's what happens, isn't it? When yeah. it's. I, the... know, like, I, like, I David Tennant, right? Mm. I love David Tennant. He's second on my list. I need to Adam Driver. Um, although Tom Hiddleston is definitely up on that list now after Loki. Anyway, anyway, um, before we segue into uh, <laughs> just a, a list of celebrities you're thirsting over, yeah, that I would leave you for. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think you probably you I'd go, leave you for a night. Yeah, you go away for a dirty go weekend, away, go away for a but night, then yeah. return. Hopefully, yeah. return back to anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. And anyway, I saw David Tennant. He when he played um, Hamlet mm -hmm. uh, in um, Shakespeare performance that I saw. Um, even if I went and on that night. David Tennant had forgotten every single word of Shakespeare he's ever known, I would have still very much enjoyed just seeing David Tennant. <laughs> you know, it's that. that and just enjoyed him being Scottish. Or, just enjoyed yeah. him being near me. Yeah. yeah. We well, did pass out when you were near him before. But you know what, don't, we're not going to go into that. That's another story. Well, we are, we're going to go into that now. Well, no, we're going to that. It's, so, it's, it's another time. It's one of the times I met David Tennant. Um, I've had a, a, a long morning. I, I ended up passing out. Anyway, carry on. Keep going. What are you saying? What's this bit? We haven't talked about this bit yet. She says, fr <laughs> frantically pointing to my notes. Um, okay, no. So what haven't we talked about then? Um, we haven't talked about as many specific songs as I wanted to talk about, but then we've talked about the themes involved. Yes. Um, so there's one bit that I want to reference yes. near the end. Near the end. And he sees the, the crack of light through the door where the door's now open. Oh, yeah. And it's sort of referencing that, Oh, Lockdown's lockdown is end because a lot of yeah. the songs are about you know it'll end any day now that sort of thing. You know, I thought he was just talking about the world. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, true, it could be actually because he said one of the he talks about the world and he says um, twenty thousand years have passed, mm. only seven more to go. Yeah, well, this is the the feeling though, isn't yeah. it? Because a lot of the time in this phase, we've had those thoughts of wow, is this is you know. Is, well, this you know, is big. We've when, not been through this before. When Canada's going through 45 degree heat for the first time ever and Brazil is experiencing its first ever bout of snow, yeah, yeah, I'm worried. It's like that film The Day After Tomorrow. <laughs> oh, darling, that film. That, was it that the film that, that shit me up? I think it was that one. And I didn't sleep for like two days. Mm. It was just... Watching the skies. I was, yeah. For was extreme just, weather. Yeah, I was not. Anyway, and there's a sequence that he films of coming outside of 
the room, you yeah. know, and it's like the, the blinding light and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And then I think there's something like you hear the crowd laughing. He, he puts a laughter track over it at that yeah. point. And then he's sort of trying to get back in and he's, he's, he's too scared to go outside. Mm. And that kind of, again, doesn't it perfectly way sum up how a lot of us are feeling right now? We've wanted to get out mm. for so long, but now we're feeling anxiety about what that means to re-engage fully. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, and I don't know, it just, I, honestly, I can't urge people enough to watch it because it kind of encapsulates a whole, I don't know, just a vibe of what we've yeah. been going through. You and know? watch the whole thing. Like, don't yeah. just dip in and out of songs. Sit down for an hour and a half, put your phone down, mm. social media can wait, you know, just, just put yeah. it to one side and watch this for, for an hour and a half just yeah. in its entirety as it, as it should be watched. And, and also I think as well, this is not just about the pandemic. No. I think this is about our mental health as a whole mm. there is we've already referenced the song called all eyes on me which mm. is amazing um at just as a song you know without regardless of the message mm. but there's he does a monologue in the middle of it where he describes you know about five years ago starting to experience panic attacks on stage yeah um and then he quit performing live and he mentions that in january of 2020 he, he felt his mental health had was in a good place. Yeah. He'd, he'd got better and he decided it was time to re-enter the live performance territory, you know. And then the last thing he says in the monologue is, and then the funniest thing happened, you know. <laughs> Obviously referencing Everything March in yeah. 2020. Yeah. But even if you took out of the out of the mix the pandemic, mm. it still it still stands because there was a bit of me thinking, is he talking about the pandemic? Or is he talking about, and then the funniest thing happened, because he went back on stage, he started to have panic attacks again. Because mm. that is very often where we go. If we've, Don't get me wrong. If we're in a better place, we're much more able to deal with the things that were triggering our mental health struggles, our anxiety, yes. our depression. But if we haven't actually done the work of re... I don't know, um, understanding differently those situations... Yes. We leave ourselves vulnerable to that part of us again feeling vulnerable. Yeah. Um, vulnerable to feeling vulnerable. Vulnerable. Yeah, vulnerable. I mean, I guess that's yeah. No um, but you know what I mean. It, we, if we haven't done the work, if we mm. haven't reframed what's going on there, then we might experience the same responses. Mm. The good news about that though is that if we have, we don't need to fear those situations anymore. No. You know, and this is why I'm I'm saying his objection, if you like, his subconscious objection to just being able to do this without any panic. In his interviews, mm. in this special, hadn't necessarily been answered, mm. and I wonder if he's done the work now so that he can return to yeah. the live field without having to be concerned about you know those those responses kicking in again. Mm. You know? Well, he he clearly thrives there, so I'm you know well, I that hope isn't that... isn't that the paradox though? Mm. So th you had this as well mm. when you stopped doing you know she who bakes in quite a, as um, yeah a, as full time away. There was a bit of you that that was that was your I don't use the word joy, but it was your it was your goal, it was your passion. Yeah? It was my joy until it stopped becoming my joy. But we could do a whole a whole episode on but, that. But well. that's the thing. It's like that's where your mind goes in terms of this is what makes me feel good about me. But then when it stops being a pleasant experience, yeah. where do you go to feel good about you? Exactly. And that is exactly what is encapsulated in this special, in from the perspective of him as a performer. Granted. But also, when we apply it to our lives, the things that we haven't been able to engage in mm. that we have come to rely on and take for granted, you know? Yeah. And I guess that's, um, that's the thing that I want to, I wanted to take away from that particular um, comedy special was that this is a, this applies to all of us. Yes. Yeah, and um, I don't know, I think sometimes it's nice to see somebody who you think has a completely different set of circumstances but still struggling, still having their own struggles because it lets you know you're not alone. Mm. And I think in the in mental recent... mental health struggles can be a, a really lonely place. And yeah. like that "All Eyes on Me" song, I said to you, it, that feels as I'm listening to it, it feels like how my brain spirals downwards mm. when I'm in that yeah. frame of mind. If that makes sense. Yeah. I, so I... listening to it, it's it's funny, isn't it? Because it's like, well, why would you want to listen to a song that makes you feel sad? Mm. But like you just said, it makes me feel less alone. And I think that was that was kind of the point 
yeah. of the, of this whole podcast as well. You know, of the yeah. reason why we do what we do yes. is to make sure that people know that whatever they are going through, that they're not alone. And that yeah. even if they feel like they're the only people in the world possibly going through this, mm. there will be people going through things similar or can relate or can empathize mm. and just yeah that you're you're absolutely you're never ever alone that's it it's, we've had to we've had to isolate in some degree mm. for the last 16 to 18 months yeah mm. but we shouldn't ever isolate ourselves emotionally yeah because that that will always lead to a dark place you know no matter how much we like our own company we like our own space we shouldn't isolate emotionally from the people around us who care about us and who we care about absolutely uh, and if we if we talk if we keep the dialogue going then we will, you know, we get through this stuff together, don't we? Yeah, and that's mm. what we're trying to help with. Cool. And I think that's, I think that's all we've really, you know, we, we could yeah. talk about this a lot more, but that's that's what we wanted to cover, isn't it? Yes, yes. So as we've said before, if you haven't seen it, please, please go watch it. It's great. And let us know what you think of it after you've seen it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you very much for listening, guys. As always, you can find me on Instagram. We just talked about how bad social media is. Come find us on social media. <laughs> um, you can find me on Instagram at Brit Marie Box. You can find him at Tim Box Mind Coach. Tim also has some really, really great YouTube videos that I highly recommend you check out, not just because I'm his wife, but because I think they're brilliant. Um, so let us know when you're listening to the podcast what you're doing uh we really really enjoy it um but yeah until next time keep thinking outside the box thanks guys bye, bye.